continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM 560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, remember when uh, former uh, Director of National Intelligence, Jim Clap on, Clap off, Clap on, Clap off, Jim Clapper, when he lied to the American people about uh, the NSA's metadata collection program, that essentially it was dragnet surveillance and there were millions of uh, bytes of data, well, more than that, metadata, uh, the, 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 regardless, the data that was being collected by NSA was sort of dragnet surveillance. It included information on people that were American citizens, uh, and it was supposed to be a foreign uh, surveillance program. Uh, so that's number one problem. And then right. even to the extent that you would say, well, if they're foreign, if they're American citizens who are collaborating, well, they were American citizens who were innocent of any wrongdoing. And so we have constitutional protections against such warrantless surveillance. Well, apparently we have something like this in Illinois, too, that needs a bit of a look-see. From the Liberty Justice Center, which uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm a co-founder of. In 2019, the state of Illinois uh, enacted legislation funding the installation of hundreds of highway cameras known as automated license plate readers across Chicago's expressways. These automated license plate readers capture an image of every vehicle that drives past and compares each vehicle's license plate and other identifying features to a national database used by law enforcement agencies across the country. The images, as well as their date, time, and GPS coordinates, are collected and stored for future use. So it can compare. You know, I'm sure you've seen this in movies, right? You can compare, get all the surveillance cameras talking to one another, and you can zero in on the a vehicle that you're looking for right. and and the time and place and location and and, and date that uh, that that you uh, that that it was wherever it was um and uh well that's a, a nice tool for law enforcement but it's not one that should be completely unencumbered for the same reasons that the national uh security agency should not be unencumbered from our constitutional rights. So the Liberty Justice Center is suing the Illinois State Police on behalf of multiple Cook County residents who argue that this surveillance oversteps police authority. It's a tool, but it's a tool that has to be restrained by individuals or individual constitutional rights. And to make that argument about why this is violative of said rights, we're pleased to be joined by Riley Stevens, who is a attorney at the Liberty Justice Center? Riley, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, happy to be here. So, um, so what's the problem with this? Because, of course, you you want to give uh, law enforcement the tools that it needs and and the uh, updated technology that's available to keep people safe. But uh, there's always the balance between safety and freedom. And you're suggesting that uh, this program is um, uh, has created an imbalance. Yeah, no, well, I, and I think you just described the situation well, and I think you know, you're right to say, you know, this kind of uh, balance between privacy and security or safety, uh, you know, these trade-offs are something that reasonable people can disagree about. We think in this case, uh, Illinois State Police has gone over the line because, you, you know, because you know, essentially what they're doing is they are hoovering up everywhere you drive, right? Anyone of your uh, listeners who are – uh, driving to work in Cook County this morning, you're on the cameras. In fact, I was, as I was waiting to come on, you guys had the traffic report, and I couldn't help but uh, chuckle because all of the expressways named in the traffic report are the ones we point out in the complaint are covered in these cameras, actually. Um, and so I think, you know, we think that that oversteps the bound to track everyone everywhere they drive and only later decide who you think you might suspect of something, right? You know, to track every citizen, regardless of suspicion, we think uh, creates the kind of dragnet surveillance state that we don't want to live in, right? And I think, yes, these things have a legitimate use in some mm -hmm. scope, perhaps, um, or at least more legitimate use or less troubling use, right? If you're 
uh, trying to find the the fleeing shooter in the moment, or you're trying to find the kidnapped kid in the moment, that's a little bit different than tracking every innocent citizen just in case one day you decide you don't like them. Well, well right. Okay. Is, 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 that the, is that the big rub, is that you're inventorying all this data? So, um, uh, you know, and, and anybody who has access to this data can have access to essentially people's um, pu- public movements, and that's... Uh, you know, and that's 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 a, a, a unconstitutional privacy violation. I mean, that's that's really what we say in our lawsuit. We think it's an unconstitutional privacy violation. We think that you know this this stuff is you know added the aggregate of all these movements can be uh, really troubling. I mean, you mentioned earlier as we were coming in some of this you know the NSA sort of things, and that's the same situation where you know oh well, any given data point might not tell people very much, but once you aggregate together that they drove in the direction of the medical clinic and drove home for the medical clinic. And, oh, you also have their cell phone that they called the medical clinic or got a call from there. All of a sudden you're adding up, you know, exactly what uh, private medical information this person has. Right. Um, And Illinois in its wisdom realizes this in one context, which is they realize that they've now passed a special carve out where the one thing they can't use data for actually the two things are abortion and illegal immigration are the two things that they specifically will not cooperate with red state <laughs> right. uh, on those issues. That Those privacy concerns, which you can understand, the woman driving in from Indiana looking for an abortion is going to get picked up on these cameras. Um, and that privacy concern they care about, uh, right. but not, none of the others they care about. Abortion. So they care about well, the privacy concern for an illegal immigrant, but not for an American citizen. Well, I mean, but, I mean, it's, well, it, but it's not just an illegal immigrant or an American citizen. It's, you know, it's anyone... You know, illegal, legal, resident, non-resident. You know, anyone who drives a car is on is getting picked up here, right? No, no, I understand that, but I'm saying in terms of then, then this 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 highlights part one of the many problems with this. As then it becomes political, and then we say, well, we're, as you said, carve out. So we're going to in a we're we're a sanctuary state. We're a sanctuary city. We're not going to cooperate with ICE, so we're not going to turn over this data to you because we're concerned about the privacy rights of non-citizens. But when it comes to citizens, well, we don't care about their constitutional rights. No, exactly. I mean, I think you know, as in as in the first First Amendment realm, that you don't really need First Amendment protections for popular ideas, right? But it's the things that people decide they don't like about you that, that then you all of a sudden they're going to use that against you. And the same thing here, they're, tra- you know, when you're tracking all this personal data, it's, pr- you know, it's perfectly fine when you have nothing to hide, you say, and that, but then someone decides they don't like you. And all of a sudden they start digging in and all of a sudden all sorts of, you know, personal things that no one would ever think to uh, spread about you or to try and investigate about you all of a sudden become a, uh, targets of interest and now they have the database of everywhere you've been just to double check once they once they realize that you should be suspected of something. Well I do recall Janulius and Governor Pritzker having a press conference saying women who drive in from Iowa to Indiana, these cameras are not going to be used to, you know, uh to make sure that you get punished for driving to Illinois to get an abortion. Correct. Yeah, if that was the same bill that they passed right. just a few months ago. Okay. Um that was it was abortion and it was uh, immigration enforcement. Okay, so, so let me, all right, let me tell you. So a year ago, we had a car stolen from our family and they used this system and they, they were police called me back and said, no one in Cook County or Illinois has seen this plate. So th- they used that system, plugged in the plate number and said, you know, and eventually we found it dumped in, in Chicago. It's, a, it's a never left Chicago, but how can it be used in a sinister manner? Are, are there any actual cases of that? Um, I mean, the, the ways in which we, I mean, I, I think it, you know, like, like we said, it's all a matter of, you know, how much do you trust the United States police, I suppose. And obviously in many cases, when they're investigating actual crimes, uh, we might not mind the particular crime, the use of the particular crime we're investigating, right? But, but, you know, we think that, uh, the fact that you, you, know, you as an innocent citizen, are being tracked constantly, whether they like you or not, right? And all of us now are subject to basically constant surveillance and then this constant panopticon. Uh, that's where it starts getting creepy. And the fact that we don't really have any oversight on LSA police and how they use it, right? They don't have to go to a judge. They don't have to get a warrant. 
They don't have any kind of, you know, committee or review board, right? What they have is they have a rule that says you can only look at this data for a legitimate law enforcement purpose. And what is a legitimate law enforcement purpose? Well, they decide what it is. Yeah, well, that, right. right. That's, that's true. That's the rub. And, yeah, I, I mean, the right? and, they're not, and, I mean, and look, they're not supposed to use it. You know, the state trooper's not supposed to go in and look up his ex-girlfriend and see where she's going. But he but could. <laughs> there, there's no judge you have to go to ask permission to look. Yeah, and it's and, and 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 by the way, you know, with all deference to law enforcement, it's not like the Illinois State Police has not been, um, uh, you know, a repository of instances of corruption, just like every other state agency in Illinois. But but here's the thing: I mean, the the the, the example you gave, finding your stolen car. Well, you're authorizing the the, the look see for your stolen car. Right. That's completely different. With this with this dragnet surveillance, which is a good way to describe it. The point here is. If, if you want to zero in on somebody, then go get a judge to give you a warrant. Um, and if you don't, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't be able to maintain this data. You can have the infrastructure to surveil it, but you can't you uh, you know, it, it, you you have to. And, and if you if you can't get the uh, all of the information you would otherwise get if you were retaining it in perpetuity. Well, that's the balance you strike when you ha and to, to make law enforcement have to be more surgical with respect to their surveillance, their preemptory surveillance of people. Uh, I mean, that, that seems to me the solution, right? Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, I think you're right. And I think, you know, as you say, with, the, with striking the balance, you know, we could, we could solve a whole lot of crimes. If we just put a camera in every single room of your house. Yeah. Right. right. A lot of domestic violence. We could solve a lot of drug use, a lot of other really nasty stuff. We could catch people. I think we all understand that we don't want the government into our lives that intimately. And so reasonable people can decide where the line should be drawn. But, you know, we have to, uh, in a free society, you have to have some scope of your life that is not under constant watch by the government, I think, in order to function. Yeah, no, th exactly. No, that's exactly right. Um, the um, uh, Has there been other litigation on these automated license plate readers? Uh, in uh, Not uh, there are a few cases around the country, not much. I mean, most of the cases, if you can look at them, are criminal cases. What happens is, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the Massachusetts Supreme Court, for instance, had a case, and then had the guy driving, I think it was Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket or one of these places, he was like, driving over the bridge and back, and that's how they uh, ID'd him. Uh, but the Supreme Court said... Well, you know, it's, we only have the one camera here in the record of the case, so we don't really know if there's all these other cameras. And that could be troubling, but all we know here is this got substantive to this guy. And so what we said was, well, okay, let's try this as a civil case where we can try and get in uh, the full scope of the dragnet, as it were. And so that's our attempt. Our attempt at innovation here, essentially, is to build the kind of record that the, these criminal cases generally aren't have not been able to build. And and so and the relief you seek is in joining the uh, implementation of these uh, automatic license plate readers until and unless the what the general assembly uh, uh, crafts some legislation that strikes a balance that isn't currently being struck that has the oversight that currently is not present. Yeah, no, I and I I think essentially what we're saying is you have to. If you're going to have anything like this, it has to be subject to Fourth Amendment standards. It has to be right. subject to warrants and judges and these kinds of protections and restrictions. And I, I think you, there's a few permutations of exactly what processes you could have there. But ultimately, it's not just trusting uh, the honor and uh, respectability of the Illinois State Police. Uh, he is Riley Stevens. He's a lawyer at Liberty Justice Center. The case is Scholl, S-C-H-O-L-L, Scholl v versus Illinois State Police. Get more information at libertyjusticecenter.org. That's libertyjusticecenter.org. Riley Stevens, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thank you so much. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's like a hot steaming cup of information to start your day. It's Chicago's morning answer. On AM 560, The Answer. Hi, this is Randy Donnelly from Donnelly Auctions in Union, Illinois, with my oh, current my want list for upcoming auctions. Guns and military items are always at the top of my list, but I have buyers for vintage automobiles and motorcycles, old gas pumps and automotive signs. Do you have pinball machines and coin-operated games like slot machines, jukeboxes? How about Coke machines and soda machines? 